In the space race, SpaceX's speed relies not only on its technical capabilities, but also on FAA approval, an organization holding crucial authority in issuing launch licenses. However, the relationship between Elon and the FAA has been far from smooth. SpaceX faced delays and even unwarranted penalties from the FAA in the past. Everything remains unchanged till now. The battle for the green light for the Starship's second flight continues and causes many new disagreements between these two agencies. Recently, SpaceX publicly criticized significant FAA errors in the way this government agency manages the licensing process. Their delays are not only a rock blocking SpaceX's Starship path to success, but also hinder the progress of a promising space industry. Stay tuned as we get into all this and lots more in this episode of Alpha Tech. SpaceX is dominating the space launch industry with continuous projects in motion. Notably, the Falcon 9 and Starship programs are in full swing. With Elon Musk's goal of launching 100 rockets in 2023, as we approach the year's end, SpaceX is vigorously conducting launches at an average of three and a half days per rocket. This has propelled the Falcon rocket launches to over 70, setting a record for SpaceX. Besides, the unprecedented pace has left the entire space industry astonished. For the upcoming year, the company aims to increase this rate by about 50%. And of course, their focus is not solely on Falcon 9. They also plan to boost the frequency of launches for their colossal rocket Starship, which is fundamentally ready for the next launches. The FAA's licensing challenges have made SpaceX officials frustrated, especially as they have to wait day after day for a set of documents that can be rendered disabled shortly after. At this point, many company officials believe that the government's actually falling behind, impeding the ability to return NASA astronauts to the moon. Those are the procedures specific to SpaceX. But what about other space companies in the industry? Certainly, there will be new players entering the field, such as United Launch Alliance's Vulcan rocket, Blue Origin's new Glenn, and other upcoming smaller rockets. Additionally, the increasing flight rates of Virgin Galactic, the return of Blue Origin's new Shepard suborbital space tourism rocket, and the potential for high-altitude balloon flights all add new dynamics to the industry. So how will the government's FAA office handle all these launches? With the sluggish pace of resolving SpaceX's launch issues as we've seen, can they potentially stifle the entire rocket launch market in the future? Honestly, that's likely to happen if they don't initiate changes right within their organization. And these are the issues that SpaceX executive William Gerstenmeyer, the company's VP for Build and Reliability, wants to mention. With the flight rates that are increasing, with the other players that are coming on board, we see there's potentially a big industry problem where the pace of the government is not going to be able to keep up with the pace of the development on the private sector side, Gersten Meyer said, ahead of his testimony before the Senate Commerce Subcommittee on Space and Science at a hearing titled Promoting Safety, Innovation, and Competitiveness in U.S. Commercial Human Space Activities. Gersten Meyer proposed that the FAA double the staff in the licensing division of the Office of Commercial Space Transportation, also known as AST. Additionally, the FAA should be granted faster hiring authority to recruit from the best pool of candidates. The company also believes that licensed applicants should have the option to participate in sponsoring independent third-party technical support to assist the FAA's ramp-up in the coming months while the agency undergoes the hiring process. To illustrate their perspective on the FAA's stalled work, company officials have cited several recent examples where they had to postpone or modify their plans. One example is Falcon 9 launches from Vandenberg Space Force Base, where flight paths sometimes cross over Jalama Beach, located to the south of the spaceport in California. Calculations and analysis to determine the need for beach closures have been put on hold to prioritize the FAA's Starship analysis. Instead, SpaceX is trying to find nighttime launch opportunities when the beach is empty. Despite Falcon 9's frequent launches, the licensing process is described as challenging and cumbersome. I think people assume because Falcon flies every four days on average that that licensing process is kind of a well-oiled machine, one SpaceX official said. Certainly, AST's made it work, and we've made it work, but I can assure you that it's very challenging. It's very cumbersome. In many cases, we've deferred work that's associated with those programs because we know that if we put those documents in front of the FAA, it's going to redirect their attention away from our Starship program and vice versa. There's a very real problem here with resourcing where our programs are competing with each other. Although SpaceX is assured that no factors will impact the FAA's investigation into Starship, they still have to wait another two weeks before there might be a chance to obtain the license. In addition, a recent FAA official told the Washington Post that consultations with the Fish and Wildlife Services seem likely to extend until November. SpaceX officials said that they've worked for two years to obtain the initial spaceship launch license and have been waiting months for the second. 
We've been ready to fly a few weeks now, said SpaceX Senior Vice President Tim Hughes, who oversees global business and government affairs for the company, and we'd very much like the government to be able to move as quickly as we are. If you're able to build a rocket faster than the government can regulate it, that's upside down, and that needs to be addressed. So we think some regulatory reforms are needed. Indeed, the FAA needs to change to become faster. Otherwise, prolonged evaluations like these will indefinitely delay numerous future test flights, crucial for proving the survivability and refueling capabilities of Starship, consequently impacting the nation's critical missions. In 2021, NASA awarded SpaceX a $2.9 billion contract for Starship to ferry astronauts to and from the surface of the moon as part of the space agency's Artemis program. Given that, the FAA should work expeditiously, the company officials said in the interviews. There should be some sort of prioritization relative to programs of national importance, you said. For instance, launches that serve the Artemis program. Licensing at this point for Starship is a critical path item for the Artemis program and for our execution, one of the SpaceX officials said. Certainly looking forward to next year. We really need to operate that program at a higher cadence of flights. Six to eight month turns, that's not great for the program. In fact, it's not just high-ranking officials at SpaceX who are complaining. Even Elon Musk, the owner of SpaceX, has long been dissatisfied with the FAA's slow work pace. In late 2020, the company launched a prototype of its Starship spacecraft in violation of its license. Unlike its aircraft division, which is fine, the FAA space division has a fundamentally broken regulatory structure, Musk wrote at the time on Twitter, now renamed X. Their rules are meant for a handful of expendable launches per year from a few government facilities. Under those rules, humanity will never get to Mars. Recently, Musk met with senior FAA officials in Washington in what officials said was a cordial and productive encounter. The FAA didn't respond to a request for a comment, but in a recent blog post, Kelvin Coleman, the head of the FAA's Office of Commercial Space Transportation, said the agency has been challenged to keep pace with the industry, keeping pace intellectually, not just in license. That's what makes it fun. We like rising to the challenge. As we see more companies and the cadence of operations increase, what that means for us is an increased demand for our products and services. We still have some growth to do on how we deliver on that demand, he said. A senior official, who spoke on the condition of anonymity because of not being authorized to speak publicly, said that the agency's space division has been calling for more resources for several years but with little luck. That person said the agency has had to shift all of the resources that we've allocated for SpaceX programs to Starship to support the next launch meaning work on Falcon 9, another SpaceX program, is on hold for the moment. So they're starting to feel it in a real way. And that's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback's very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.